love it. Well, our next guest has starred in several Sports Illustrated swimsuit issues, worked the Victoria's Secrets catwalk, and is the first African-American woman to hold two beauty contracts simultaneously as the face of CoverGirl mm -hmm. and Maybelline. Woo. And here to talk about her life on the catwalk, her charity, Angel Wings, and her new reality TV show is super, super model Jessica White. <laughs> Thank you so much for being here, Jessica. Thank you for having me. Shannon just wants to stare at you for a minute. Yes, so. I was going to do it and be like this. <laughs> Get it out of your system now, Shannon. Okay. Yeah, Thank you. I'm back. I'm back. <laughs> So, Jessica, I don't think I've been in, into a CVS without seeing your face. What does that feel like for you? I actually steal the photos. I'm st I mean, you know what? I'm still a little girl from Buffalo. I enjoy seeing it. Like, I'll get out the car and I see my billboard in Times Square and take Aww. a picture and I send it to my family. You know, you're just a little girl from Buffalo. You dream of things like this. And then for it to actually become a reality, I'm extremely humbled by it. So it never gets old? No. Hell no. <laughs> Keep it going. Keep more it going. More <laughs> blessings, please. I hear that. Well, yes. Tyra Banks dubbed you the model of your generation. What do you think she meant by that? And what's been the secret to your success and your longevity? I mean, you've been modeling since you were 13. 13. I started in 1999. Wow. I'm a 90s model. I love saying that. <laughs> um, you know what? I've always just been true to myself. You know, this is a business that has a lot of stereotypes and right. business where people don't want you to do a lot of things or step outside of their box. And I've never been afraid to just be myself. Mm -hmm. And that's why I always tell young girls, be yourself and let your beauty shine through and keep God first. And if you're doing that, 15 years later, you'll still be one of the most successful because you've been true to who you were. And I've wow. never gone point. outside of who my mom and my father taught me to be. Wow. You know, over the years, we've heard a lot about the lack of diversity on the runway and in ad campaigns, but you don't seem to be having a problem at all. Do you think things have gotten better for models of color? I think it's growing and it is changing and they're trying to become better about that but mm -hmm. I was actually having a conversation where the fact of the matter is I'm still the only black girl on set wow. and that was the case before, be way before my time when I was just a little young girl watching Naomi Campbell and Tyra Banks. You know their story yeah. and how challenging it was for them and I still am the only, it's only room for one black girl on set and that's, that's it's kind of disturbing, yeah. but I do believe that they're trying. They are trying. Well, what do you think it's going to take to get them to change that? <sighs> what can be done? I mean, we've been having this conversation <laughs> way before me. Yeah. Um, I, the only thing you can do as a model, which is what I do, I also encourage Maybelline to hire other black girls. Oh, that's wow. nice. I'm never, un, you know, intimidated. I know Joan Small, and I know Jordan mm -hmm. Dunn, and I know all of them, Chanel, and I'm like the big sister to them. Oh. It, that's the only thing you can do. You may not mm -hmm. be able to change the mindset of other people, but mm -hmm. what you can do is not be intimidated by other girls and change your mindset. You have to challenge yourself. And I think if you do that, and you push and you help get other people jobs, then it kind of comes back to you. I like the humility in you because a lot of people would try to hold it all for themselves and say there's not enough room for all of us, just I one. Mean, I'm, so. I'm, as much as I love modeling and it's been such a, a platform for me and the other things that I'm doing, I'm a businesswoman. It's well, beyond right taking a photograph for me. Mm -hmm. And I want to see the business change. And of course, I want to help other young girls because I am moving on in my mm -hmm. career. You know, for me, I'm not that young girl dreaming of being a supermodel. It mm -hmm. happened. Now I'm moving on. And it happened when you were 13. So tell us that story about when you got discovered. And what do you think they saw in you that said she could be the next big supermodel? You are so funny the way you just put that out there. <laughs> wow. uh, no, you know what? I came from <laughs> Buffalo. And I was just a little young girl from the ghetto. Mm -hmm from humbling beginnings, mm. just not wanting to be a statistic like all the other girls that I was going to school mm. with. Mm. And I was one of those kids where my mother and my father always cultivated me into the arts. So I was doing mime dance, ballet. I was in African dance. I was in every mm. acting class. I was one of those very, I had a huge social calendar really? when I was a young girl. They and kept you busy. They kept me very busy. I did piano lessons. Mm -hmm. So entertainment was something that we always knew definitively I was going to do mm -hmm. and embark on. So by the time I was 13, I had already been performing. Mm -hmm. So I had no stage fright. I had already been the lead in so many plays in Buffalo and had the Lee Rose and had a girls group when I was younger. <laughs> what was the Called name of the group? Called the Memorial Temple Airs. Uh -oh. The Memorial Temple Airs. It was Temple so Ears. weird. It was very strange. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a gospel girls group. Okay. And Amen. our church was called Memorial Temple. Oh, okay. And so we named, I don't know, it was you. some weird. <laughs> but, but, you know, I was always so busy. Mm. And 
I started doing modeling classes, which I don't recommend for young girls. Oh, you really? don't have Why? to because my mom spent unnecessary money. Oh, okay. you, don't, you don't need to spend that type of money. You, we, we could have taken photos, got a cute little portfolio together. I could have mm -hmm. come to New York, had open call, and then gone to an agency and got picked up that way. But I okay. did IMTA, actually, oh. which is a modeling and talent competition here in oh, New York. Oh, okay. Yeah. Katie Holmes was discovered there. Wow. And I got 30 callbacks for modeling and 50 callbacks for acting. Wow. And we needed to figure out whether it was going to be acting or modeling. And then two weeks later, after signing with IMG, the biggest modeling agency in the world, my first job was American Vogue two weeks later. Wow. You were kidding. And it that hasn't doesn't stopped. happen. That's no. a Cinderella story. That doesn't that happen is. to anybody. It happens to people who God is you know, dedicated to. And I've always been a very spiritual and grounded person. I like God that. is good. So. so what was that experience like after coming from Buffalo to then going off and moving to Paris and working with people like Marc Jacobs, Oscar de la Renta, Ralph Lauren? I mean, was it frightening for you or it was, was it challenging. exciting? It was challenging. It wasn't frightening because I didn't mm -hmm. know what was going on. Mm -hmm. I actually <laughs> went, just to, like, okay, smile, I went to or? Paris and, you know, Stella McCartney was still designing for Chloe at the time. Mm. Yeah. And I walked in and she took all, my clo all the clothes from Giselle and let me star in her show. I did her campaign. Wow. It was just like a whirlwind. And I was sitting there just like, oh, when can I go home? I just want to go <laughs> home, just go back to school. Out. Yeah, I just wanted to hang out with the wow. kids. I didn't really know what was going on, so it didn't affect me. Mm -hmm. I was always just like, oh, I got the Chloe campaign. Okay, whatever okay. that is. But that's a huge deal. I mean, you learn eventually how big it is because <laughs> right. you got a lot of money coming in and things that you have to do, and you have to play the role the right way. But so, I think the fact that I was naive helps me, too. But you don't think, do you look back at that and say, I wish I would have soaked that opportunity up more, of course, those experiences? Definitely. I ate okay. McDonald's every single day in Paris. <laughs> you and, were kidding. Yeah, wow. every, every single Paris? day. I was 13. Not even real French fries in Paris? No. <laughs> <laughs> right. No. Uh, well, but, you know, I'm doing it now. You so. Good. Clearly, you're not eating French fries from McDonald's mm. anymore. Yes, I am. What? Oh. I don't diet. Oh, we need to know the uh, secret. That's don't a, say that. That's don't. a whole nother show. We can <laughs> <I> do <know. laughs> like, secrets to the stars. <laughs> well, let's shift gears really quickly and talk about Angel Wings. It's mm. the foundation you started several yeah. years ago. Talk to us about this foundation and why was it important for you to start it? Uh, well, the Angel Wings Foundation is basically my life story. Mm -hmm. I've dealt with sexual abuse when I was younger. My sisters were in you know, domestic violence relationships, and I was exposed to a lot of violence and pain at a very early age while modeling, and that's the thing that people didn't know, that I was dealing with that much pain. And being able to try to mask it, you know, um, was very challenging, and I, I took the long road with healing and made a lot of unnecessary mistakes. So when I got to a place where I was now ready to open up and, you know, be healed, I had to go through that the very long journey of, of healing. And it takes a very long process, but I set out to create a facility to house 40 to 50 women in a private location so that you can basically help these women become active citizens in their community again after mm -hmm. pain and hurt has triggered their lives. We may not be able to stop sexual abuse or domestic violence, but what we can do is create a facility where women can feel safe, come in and feel like they're not being judged and and healed and ultimately that's the way that we'll be able to to change the mindset of women and, and the way that we raise our children in the future because it starts with the woman the woman is the the main person at the house she's the foundation mm. well you could have easily kept quiet about this why did you did you decide to be so open and so honest with what you endured well because I was dealing with it so much as so many other young girls would come mm -hmm. and I have this gift where I would be around them and, and could feel the pain and the hurt and it is taboo in America, yeah. but I was challenged by the fact that it's something that will destroy the female race if we don't talk about it. Not mm -hmm. every woman has dealt with it, but sexual abuse or domestic violence has no respect to person. Right. It is not about your, you know, how much money you make. It could happen to anybody. And the most of the time, it's, you know, four to five women have mm -hmm. been abused. Mm -hmm. They just choose not to talk about it. And it takes someone that's courageous enough, someone that they look up to, that they think is so perfect and has this beautiful life to say, look, I'm just like you. Mm -hmm. I never, I want to keep my feet close to the ground. Right. So I've always wanted to be able to connect to women and for them to understand I'm not bigger or, or above you. I'm just like you. And well, the sad you thing is a lot of these women are abused by people that, that they, they know. know. That's the same family. thing with my situation. Wow. It was very, it was a person that was close to my home living in the house. Now, and you have to be careful because mm -hmm. even, you know, my mom 
told me I should have kept it to myself. She's an amazing woman. I love wow. my mother. But that's a journey, you know, that's mm -hmm. a, the journey of healing. Those are, and I talk about things that are very uncomfortable for even my family, but you have to realize that it happens. Mm -hmm. And healing is just not just you, it's everybody around you has to become healed. But that's the power of God, and, and that's what I want to be the face for. Well, why do you think more women have not come out, even though people like you are sharing their stories, why do you think more people have not shared or come out with the issue and the trauma that they've gone through? It's and do you hope that your story will help them? I, I know it will. Mm -hmm. I, I have to do more as well. You know, I have mm -hmm. to challenge myself to even do more and to, to be more vocal about it and, and team up with other. Char this charity mm -hmm. is just the surface of it. I'm not, it's books, it's so many other things that God is going to encourage me to do mm -hmm. down the line. But, you know, you can only start by telling the story, right. and you'd have to take one step at a time. Well, real quick, you said that it's embarrassing for a lot of people, but tell us why people should not be embarrassed to tell about these tragedies. Because it's not your fault. Right. Mm -hmm. It's not your fault, and that's the thing. We, it's embarrassing because you feel like it's your fault. You feel mm -hmm. like, you know, as a young girl, maybe you've done something to, to encourage this. It's, it wasn't your fault, and that's the thing about every victim they always take the guilt and they mm -hmm. carry around a lot of burdens and they feel like you know you caused it or maybe you're strong enough to handle it mm -hmm. because you survived it right but that's not the case you survived it and you survived it for a reason but you're doing yourself a disjustice by not coming out and speaking about it because it's going to affect the way you deal with men right. your personal relationships mm -hmm. the way that you raise your child it is a generational curse it and will there's sadness to and there's anger and yeah. that eats away at you. Yeah, and, and yeah. it destroys your, anything that you could possibly have that's positive mm. for your future, mm. it will keep you from doing well, that. Well, we're so happy that you're putting a positive message out there and helping more people overcome this tragedy Thank in their you. life and speaking out about it. And you have a, you're working on an album yes. and you've got a new reality show yes. for the Style Network coming I, out. No, it's, it's 15 years of being very hidden, but now I'm ready. I'm mm -hmm. ready for people to see who I am, I'm gonna definitely keep my personal life private. Mm -hmm. I'm really protective of that, but I do want my fans to see, you know, the good and the bad of the business, you know, and as me just being human and trying to figure it out just like everybody else. Oh, you said, how, how do you do a reality show and keep your personal life private? Because you that oxymoron? No, you, you produce it. Ah, oh. so that's the key. <laughs> that's the key. It, so yeah. what will we be able to see? You're gonna see everything business, that's okay. it. I mean, and I'm, 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 people don't even know what my mom or my sisters look like because mm -hmm. I keep that very private as well. And they're going to come on the show. Right. So you can see my family life and how I am. All right. Well, very as exciting. long as you're there, we'll yes. be there. Right? We'll be tuning in. Yay. All right. Thank you so much <laughs> for joining for us today. Me. We really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. And you're watching Arise Entertainment 360.